right. Well, hello again. Those of you uh, who follow me might have seen my video from earlier today. I offered a challenge for the first time because I had to go to my kid's school and do a little mom stuff. Uh, so I wasn't here at 10 a.m. to go live. So instead, I got on early and I shared a passport that I've recently gotten uh, from a thrift store and I was challenging you guys to see if you could find the person in the passport. Uh, I know a couple of you did, maybe a few of you. I'm not sure if other people did and then uh, didn't um, share. And then there may be some of you who haven't caught up on that last video. So if you haven't caught up on that last video and you want to play, do not watch any more of this video because this is the answer to that puzzle. Um, but if you didn't want to do the search and you just want to see how I found this person, then follow along. I'm also going to be curious. I bet you there are people out there who found her much faster than I found her. So I'd be curious what you would have done differently, what you did do differently, um, and how you could make this a more efficient search. Because I definitely played around in the uh, sandbox for a little while before I found what I was looking for. Okay, so let's see. Let me just make sure that I'm live. I am pretty sure that I am, and I'm pretty sure that you guys can hear me, but it's always good to check on my phone. Uh, am I live? It, yes. Okay, Family Tree Notebooks is live now. All right, so this is the passport in question. I got this from Goodwill recently. <clears throat> it is a 1930 passport, and it, is in really good condition. So it's fairly legible. It has this great photo. And then it has the nice sprawling cursive that we've become used to looking at records. Um, not terrible handwriting, but you know, a little tough to read sometimes. Uh, we can see that this belongs to a Louise A. Schwartfeger, Schwartfeger uh, place of birth, Severshausen, Germany, May 17th, 1888, occupation sales lady. We've got some physical descriptions, but then of course we also have this photo of her uh, with the name written on it and the name being noticeably smudged, which is going to be important in a little bit, uh, and that it was presented to her on May 2nd, 1930. There are also stamps in this passport showing her travels after she received the passport. I didn't include photos of those because what I was interested in doing is finding her, especially finding her on family search. So as a collector of genealogical things, as somebody who's interested in um, you know, historical documents and stuff like that. I like to find things like this and then do what I can to digitize them and connect them to public profiles, especially those in family search, because everybody has access to family search in the hopes that someday somebody's going to be looking for a relative and they're going to come across these images and be excited because they've never seen, you know, these images of their, their great aunt's passport. So, um, I knew that I wanted to find her. So, I went to Family Search and I typed in Louise A. Schwartfeger, which is what is written here in her passport. And I put that her birth year is 1888. It actually has a very specific birth date here, May 17th, 1888. Um, and it's funny because I see people and they're like, oh, you can't really trust birthdays because people don't really know when they're born. It's all secondhand. I've noticed that honestly, 1850 forward, a lot of people did know when they were born. I'm not exactly sure where that comes from. At least the people in my family seem to have a pretty solid idea about when they were born. Um, but on family search, it doesn't help to add in things like May 17th. So I just put in 1888 for the range and hit find expecting her to pop right up. So these are the search results for Louise A. Schwartfeger, born in 1888. And if you do a quick scan, you can see none of these people that popped right up were born in 1888 in Germany. And, uh, you know, some of them are not even specifically named Louise. A lot of them have, they all have the name Louise in their name, but I did a scan. There were a lot of results that came up. I probably went through three or four pages, didn't find anybody who seemed to fit my person, somebody who was born 17th of May, 1888, who was born in Germany. So I tried to re uh, refine the search. I added Severshausen, Germany, which is what was written in her passport, 1888, and her name. I get 
uh, similar results, slightly different results, but I'm going through and once again, I go through three or four pages and I don't find her. So at this point, that's frustrating because now I'm thinking, okay, so is she not on family search? Has nobody made this person a profile and connected her to the gigantic, you know, one world tree that is family search. So I decide that maybe she's got a different name or maybe she Americanized her name somehow. So I do a little asterisk, Louise A. Schwert. I don't even think I took a picture of the results. Let's just say I got many more results back, none of which were the right person. So at this point, I cheat and I jump ship and go to Ancestry, where I'm much more comfortable, and which I realize is a little bit of cheating because not everybody has access to Ancestry unless you're paying for it. But I go to Ancestry. I type in Louise A. Schwertfeger, uh, birth year 1888. I don't even bother saying where she was born. I just want to see if I can find somebody born in 1888. Uh, in the records. And um, I get results. I go through. None of these people are the right person. We've got, I mean, we've got this top one, which could be the right person. We've got a departure from France arriving in New York. Um, very possible. I've got this passport here. Yeah, obviously, she was traveling, you know, back and forth from Europe, but there's not enough information in the passenger list to tell me if this is the right person. So I'm looking for more, I'm looking for a record that specifically says May 17th, 1888, born in Germany. And this is her name because this is all that I've got to go on for this person. So uh, I, if you can see, I switch in this search. I've got, if you look at the search filters on the side, I've got Louise A. Schwartfeger, born in 1888. And 1888, it's broad. So I'm getting back people who were born 1888 or around 1888. And that's not what I want. I'm pretty confident that she knows when she was born, May 17th, 1888. So in this search, I switch that to exact. I want people who are exactly born in 1888. I get some new results. And if you can see at the very bottom, suddenly I've got a Louise Schwartfeger, born 17th, May, 1888 in Hanover, Germany. So I click on that. It brings up this obituary, this obituary index. Um, and it's showing me, you know, I can kind of see in this little blurry thing, Miss Schwarzweger, uh, Services Monday. Interesting thing, there's two differences though with this information in the passport. One is that her last name is not spelled the same. There's a D in the middle of this last name and there's not one in the passport. The second thing is that um, it says that her birthplace is in Hanover, Germany. I'm not familiar enough with them. Um, oh, sorry, hold on a second. How do you, sorry. I was checking to make sure I was still live and I am, <laughs> but then it started playing me to me. Um, anyway, I'm not familiar enough with my geography to know if Hanover, Germany and you know, a sever, whatever I was searching for, if that's the same place. So first I want to see this obituary. So I click on it so I can go over to newspapers.com where I do have an account. Sadly, I don't have the publisher extra account, which is really too bad because I swear to heaven, 90% of the newspapers that I want to look at at newspapers.com are publisher extra newspapers. So I don't actually get to see this um, obituary. So instead, I go to Google and I'm trying to figure out, okay, is Ham Hanover, Germany is related to Sievershausen, which is what is in her passport. Well, it turns out Sievershausen is in the Hanover region in Germany. So then that's really promising. So suddenly it looks like this obituary has the right birth date, it has the right place, and it has this name, which is this slight spelling uh, variation. So I head back to family search because what again, I'm I could put this, I could create a profile for this person on a personal tree or on some general tree on ancestry and upload the passport. But I like family search because um, everybody has access to it and that one of the benefits of the one tree model is that you can just contribute something to a person's profile without having to have them be in you know your personal family tree without having to have some family tree that is searchable that people might find and um i know some people keep extra family trees that they just have random people on so they can identify or they can attach photos you know from dead friend and things like that the problem with that is that somebody's going to come and think that that's an actual family tree and not figure out that all of these people are only connected because it's a group of people for whom you found found photos, um, which is why I prefer to upload things to family search. So I redo my family search search with that D in the middle of her middle name. I'm sorry, in the middle of her surname. Uh, her birth year is the same. And this time right at the top, I've got a Louise Marie Wilhelmine uh, Schwartfeger, 
uh, birth 17th May, 1888, Sieversausen, uh, Hanover, Germany. I'm sure many of the things that I just said were mispronounced, but suddenly I've got somebody who looks very much like she's the right person. This person died in 1962, so they would have been alive in 1930. Um, this person died in the United States, so they would have been in the United States possibly in 1930 to be getting a passport. It all looks good. I click through to her profile and not only do I have information about her, suddenly there's a photo and that's really exciting because I have a photo and the passport to compare this with. So I click on the photo. It's a photo of the short figure sisters and this third one in has been identified as Louise Marie Wilhelmine Johan Schwertvig. Schwertvig? Short, I don't know. Um, now, is this the person from the passport? Well, I think so. It's hard because again, We've got a blurry, you know, cabinet card-esque photo. It's very pixelated. Um, this photo has been scanned at a lower resolution than, you know, the photo I took with my cell phone of this passport. But you can see that the basic features seem to match up. You know, the coloring, the basic bone structure. I'm pretty confident in saying that this is the same person. So then that's exciting because that means that I found this person. I'm looking a little more into her life. Um, there aren't very many sources for her. Uh, it doesn't seem like she had, you know, children, extended family, you've got her and she's living uh, in the 1940 census. She is living with her sister, Joanna, in her household. Um, we see her here, relationship to head of household sister and um, living with her sister who uh, was widowed. So, and then again, you know, we go back to the obituary that I can't read, but I can see in this very small blurry image that it says Miss Short Figure Services Monday. So it would suggest that she didn't get married. I'm assuming that she didn't have children. And she dies at 74 in 1962. And somewhere along the way, uh, her possessions were probably distributed among family. And I don't know how, but uh, her passport ended up at Goodwill and then I purchased it. Um, and that is the end of my search for Louise. Now I can scan this passport and scan all the images and I will attach it to this um, profile so that they could show up as memories. And, you know, again, it's one of those things where I don't know. I don't know who will be interested in her. I love to find photos and documents, even from sort of extended relatives, you know, the great, great, great aunts and uncles, because it's just, it's color in the lives of my ancestors. Um, there are still people that are connected to me. And, you know, the fact that this is a person who doesn't have a lot of sources, doesn't have a lot of whatever, it makes me think that this isn't a person who's been researched heavily because she, you know, not having children, she's not going to be anybody's direct ancestor. And so you do have, um, I guess fewer people on earth who are highly motivated to do a lot of digging and find out more about her life. But this is a woman who, you know, lived for more than 70 years and if nothing else seemed to have traveled extensively and, um, and it would be interesting to know more about her, whether or not I dig more beyond scanning this passport and adding this is, I mean, it's probably unlikely right now because I have my own genealogy stuff to do in my family. Um, but it's always kind of, interesting, curious, sort of to peek into the looking glass and see what you can find. Uh, now, obviously, the reason I, other than being a collector, I use things like this for my business. So she now gets to star in advertisements for things like my passport pages. But, um, you know, I just, I just have the hope that someday some distant relative will see these, uh, these images of her passport uploaded and be excited about that. So anyway, thank you to those of you who played along. I have a lot of stuff like this. I get cabinet cards all the time with, you know, scant information on them. And then I do a little Easter egg hunt to figure out if I can find the right person. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. We can do more stuff like this together. I, I, I think it's fun, but I'm also a giant dork. So, uh, and I'm the first person to say that. Let me check for comments. Uh, in the, oh, Crystal saying in the arrival from Cherbourg, the passport number actually matches. I didn't even think about looking at the passport number, Crystal. Thank you. I mean, I guess I still would have wanted to find, well, let's go back to, where'd that go? Um, where's, oh, it's, I didn't even, no, did I open it? Hold on. We are going to go back to see if, 
Okay, so that wouldn't have actually helped me that much. So she's saying in this top passenger list, the passport number matches. But look, the, the surname is still spelled without the D, probably to match the passport. So that wouldn't have actually helped me on family search as much as that bottom listing for the obituary did because I needed the D. But I didn't even think to look at that. So that was a good catch. Um, I can't even, <laughs> Connie wants to know I can't find, I know, right? We need to start just collecting our brick walls and throw out names and see what we can do because uh, I have, there's so many things in my life that I just think, oh, I need to, I need to outsource this and, uh, and get smarter brains on it. All right, I am going to hop off. I will be back on Wednesday. I hope you guys have a good start to your week and I will see you soon.